How are we doing folks? Well, um, the noise you hear is obviously the engine running in the background now, which I'm trying to heat up and um, have a look at the uh, pump timing because uh, I did a uh, check on the um, fuel economy I was getting out of this. Now I was expecting a nice 40 miles to the gallon or something along those lines, at least anyway. Especially given the fact that I'm not getting a massive amount of power uh, and I'm not, I'm not pushing it hard. 30 miles to the gallon is all I'm getting. So to say I'm a, a bit uh, less than impressed would be an understatement. So what I'm trying to do now is um, I'm trying to find out why I'm getting such, such poor performance and poor economy. Because if this is all this engine has to give, to call me a little bit in the disappointed side of things would be an understatement because I spent an awful lot of time and money on this conversion. And if I'd known that this engine was really not going to perform so much better than the AAZ engine, I would have just gotten another AAZ engine and put it into it to be done with all of the other messing about. So uh, anyway, let's see how we're looking here. You see here now, I have the VCDS cable connected and it's saying it's not hot enough. Um, that's my that's my desktop uh, wallpaper, if you're a wonder. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, let's, um, let's give that a while to warm up and then we'll see what we're getting. Um, if it's miles out of spec, I think it could be actually. Just looking there. All those little points at the top. That couldn't be the cloud that it's supposed to be within. Jesus. Okay, so it's miles out if that's the case. Okay, yeah, basically, um, the way this works is it's supposed to be taking samples uh, of uh, what the ignition, the ejection, Jesus, the ejection pump timing is as the engine's running. And it's supposed to kind of create a cloud of dots. And if I'm not mistaken, those dots are so far off the graph, they're right up the top, which would explain why um, the pump timing is out. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go in and I'm going to get changed into my uh, uh, working clothes. And I'm going to uh, take the van for a drive, get the temperature up. And then I'm going to, uh, we're going to address this and see how we get on because uh, that's uh, miles out. Okay, you can um, just about see the laptop on the back seat there now, uh, so uh, the uh, USB cable isn't long enough to reach up beside me, but uh, I'm going to take it off for a spin anyway, and see how we're looking. Now the engine's noisy obviously because the engine lid's off, so it's basically in the van with us. So what we're looking at now is boost pressure, and I have a, I have a graph set up for a boost pressure. Uh, Inlet air temperature, engine speed, and um, geez, speaking of boost pressure, everybody seems to make sure going around this estate that, it, that their car is on maximum boost while they're sending that all important fucking text message. Seriously, if you're the type of person who feels the need to send a text message while you're driving, just hand your fucking driving license back and don't be a dick. But uh, the engine doesn't feel like it's even pulling as strongly as it did when I did the conversion. So that's why I'm thinking there's something, there's something up. Either that or I've just kind of gotten used to the power. But I'd want to get used to more power than this because I'm a little bit underwhelmed. Especially like it's okay in first, second, third gear. You get into fourth gear, it just dies in its arse. And you know, and then by the time you're in fifth gear, you're really looking for more power and you're finding that although, yeah, it'll cruise along at 80, 90, 100, all right, at low revs, the foot's to the floor the whole time, you know? So, if you're putting your foot to the floor and you're not getting much out of it, and the engine's throwing all that fuel in to try and get the, uh, uh, try and get the power out, um, and let's say, for example, you're, um, you're not, uh, you know, the, 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 if the injection uh, injection timing is out, it's pumping the fuel in at the wrong time and you're not getting the power out of it. It's a bit 
noisy side of things now, but sure, anyway, that's... There's my foot to the floor in third gear. Like, it's no more powerful than the AAZ was, you know? That's kind of why I'm annoyed. If, I, if I'd known that the AAZ was going to... Like, if this is all it has to give, I'd look for another AAZ instead of going down the route of putting a TDI engine into it, because to be honest with you, it would have been a much easier conversion. But, um, I'm not accepting that as a solution. I'm not accepting the fact that this is all this engine has to give. I mean, Christ almighty, the lads around this area seem to be mad about their VW diesels. Send her on, lads. Does she cool, lads? Christ, there's some lift off her, lads. Well, if this is all it has to give, lads, you are talking shite. So I'm a little bit annoyed at the moment, you know, but hopefully now with the next drive, after I've done the pump timing and everything like that, if the pump timing is off, then, um, then we'll know, and I'll be a little bit happier. I don't think the engine's even sounding that good, to be honest with you. I feel like it's, it's a harshness to it or something. I'll, I'll go back into the graph now for the uh, for the um, the uh, time the injection pump timing, and it'll just say at the bottom of the screen, "Are you taking the piss?" But let's hope that that's all it is, because it's an easy fix. It's four bolts. You undo them. You turn the pump. Fish bash bosh. Thanks very much. Good luck to you. Well, sack it anyway. I shouldn't have turned off the engine. The graph disappears as soon as you do. Anyway, right, we'll, uh, I'll look, we'll have a look at the injection pump timing first of all, and then we'll go back to that. Uh, the, the engine is up to 65.7 degrees. It should be between 80 and 110. So uh, it's still not quite up to temperature. So I'm gonna uh, open the back and I'm gonna leave it ticking over for a while. Okay, yeah, so the, the graph was miles off the chart there. So, um, there's where, uh, there's where we are now, right between the red and green marks. Uh, so that's what we're looking for. Um, basically all you do is, uh, you just, uh, you slack it off, there's, uh, there's, another, uh, there's a bolt there, there's two bolts to go through the pulley. Obviously you have to stop the engine before you do that. If you don't know that, step away from the engine. And there's another bolt down the back there as well too. So you undo, undo all four of them, and it allows you to rotate the engine, like as if you would a distributor on a petrol engine. And you rotate it until you get it to, get it looking like that. And then job's a good one, I assume. So uh, let's uh, let's uh, dip everything back up and take it for a spin. Okay, so uh, everything's tightened up on the pump now, and then that, that little uh, yellow lad is right in the, in the middle. Now I know it's saying not warm enough, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it a bit for, uh, take it for a bit further a spin, and I'm going to regraph everything. And this time I'm not going to turn the engine off. I'm going to see how we get on now. Hopefully, there is a much more powerful feeling from this engine because. Uh, well, I can't do my much worse, let's just say. Okay, so now I have uh, the, the um, laptop doing a thing in the back seat again there now. I can't really see the screen, that's the problem, but uh, if I remember this time not to turn the bloody engine off and I pull up, I should be all right. So let's, uh, let's get it out for a spin. I'm gonna do, go a different way to ramps it, uh, wreck your head that way. Sounds happier already. Now, I have to be mindful not to let, it, let uh, my own desire for it to be better make me think it actually is. Yeah, they did a great job on the brakes for me in that, uh, that place, I have to say. Fantastic job. So much so that it cooks the new brake shoes I had. Come this way, the traffic is a nightmare. But anyway, that's. There's my foot to the floor in third gear. It's pulling as well in fifth gear now as it did in fourth before. So, 
I think I call that a win. Um, but uh, what we we'll do is we'll have a look. Back, we'll have a look when we get back at the uh, the graph and see what our uh, our two turbo boost pressure was when I uh, when I loaded it up. As I said, I'd be looking for around 10 psi. I, I believe that's what the um, Honeywell slash Garrett turbos in these uh, should be uh, yielding. One thing that's great about T25 is the turning circle is amazing. Apparently it's not as good on the, the ones with power steering, but that's normal enough. Okay, foot to the floor. It's no rocket ship, but... There's 80k. Another thing I've, had, I've actually noticed that happened a couple of times in this was I'd start it and you know you wouldn't touch the accelerator, you just start it and leave it tick over. And it would run on three cylinders for a few minutes, or well for a few seconds. And as soon as you touch the accelerator, it clears itself and it, it, it starts running alright. I don't know what that's about. It's, a, it's happened to me a couple of times now and um, maybe it's because the pump timing was a mile out again. So I don't know. Anyway, look at uh, I'll bring you back when we have the um, when, we're, when we're looking at the laptop. Okay, so here's our graph there now, and the, the red line is the engine speed, and the blue line is the boost pressure. So uh, the turbo is definitely boosting anyway. Uh, uh, green line is our um, uh, coolant temperature, and the yellow line is our uh, inlet air temperature as well too. So um, we're uh, <laughs> coolant is still only 67.5 degrees. Anyway, look, we can't do much about that at this stage. So, right. Um, I'd like to see how you can actually get the, the the legend on the side of it, so you can you can see what the numbers actually are. Um, so, the the limit there is two point five uh, millibar for the blue. So. Uh, Ah, oh, for God's sake. Here, I'll come back to you now in a sec. All right, so we've got boost pressure. We know our uh, pump timing is within the limits now anyway. So I think, to be honest with you, we can expect that it's going to be... Uh, uh, it's going to be right now anyway. So, yeah, look, at, let's let's call it at that. And um, so we've got our, uh, our pump timing done. Boost pressure is, is grand. Um, so uh, and our inlet air temperature is um, is nice and cool as well too. So um, yeah, I think to be honest with you, we're uh, we're onto a winner there on that one. So um, I think we should see improvements. I'm gonna have to do the uh, fuel economy test again. So I have the tank full now, and I took a picture of the odometer. Uh, I don't want to reset it. I want to clock up a certain number of miles. So. Um, by the way, for anybody who has VCDS and they want to know how to use, the, uh, how to do the pump timing, go into measurement blocks. Uh, well, well, I'll go back here for a second, right? So, when you're in this page here, uh, I'll go back one step actually again. So, select control model, module even. So, select that. Go in here, select your engine, obviously. All right, you go in here, wait for it to do its thing. You can read it, get all your information on your engine. Go to measurement blocks. Select that, go group treble zero, go to go here, switch to basic settings, and then you'll see TDI timing over here, and then that gives you, that gives you your graph, okay? And then your graph will uh, pop up once you select the engine type, which is down here. So you have AFN, AHU, and 1Z, which is uh, there, okay? So, uh, and then your yellow line basically crosses the blue line at the point where the t or, uh, then your, your, your timing is bob on, but if it's it needs to be between the red and green line. Try and get it in the middle if you can. No reason why you can't, it doesn't take that much time to do. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it spot on. You have to warm the engine up to 80 degrees coolant temperature, but uh, it seems quite difficult in the T25. Anyway, look, at, let's, uh, let's leave it at that and uh, I'll report back with my findings when I have another, uh, another report on the fuel economy. The great thing about T25s is every time you fix one problem, another one happens. Now look.
the hits just keep on coming. Anyway, I'm gonna have to fix that now. Ah, yeah.